Uh, greetings all and welcome back to Globit's Gaming Channel. I've got something a little bit special for you today. <coughs> My birthday has been and gone. It was yesterday. I uh, got lots of nice presents, including Nerf guns and all kinds of other bits and pieces. Uh, the usual socks and all that kind of good stuff, because when you get to the <laughs> to my sort of age, you stop getting things you want for your birthday and you start getting things that you need. Um, socks and smellies and all that kind of good stuff. Oh, oh, what I've got for you today is a replay sent for, into me by Beyond D. Uh, he's pushing up with his mate Boogie M and Wax25. They're from the Ideal Clan, and as you can see, from, you can't see it from their stats, um, because that's not working on this replay, unfortunately. But they're all Unicum standard players. Um, they're all ridiculously high efficiencies, ridiculously high WN8s WN or WN7s. Really good win rates with lots of games played. They're not just these guys that basically go and remake their um, accounts and go from scratch again to get really good scores on their efficiencies. But anyway, he's driving the T2383, which I have no idea what this tank is. And the only reason I'm showing it is basically because this thing came up in, the replay, in my replay folder and I was like, what the hell is this thing? Um, it looks like a T20 chassis with a Sherman turret shoved on the top of it. Um, it does use, by the looks of things, the Sherman's 76mm gun. Um, pretty much the same stats. The armor pen's not that great. It's low alpha, but it's really high rate of fire. Now, probably I should have researched this tank a little bit more. I think what this tank is for, if I remember correctly from what I've been told from others, uh, it's a basically a special tank that people, super testers, basically get. Um, to basically test out for balance purposes and basically what um, Beyond and Boogie are going to show you here, well Beyond definitely is going to show you the, basically how to use this tank. Uh, the reason I want to show you this replay, it shows a unique tank and also it's one of the best replays I think I've ever had the privilege of watching. Uh, one of the best replays that's actually been sent in to me in a very 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 long time. These guys um, the, advanti the advantages in the enemy team are great. They've got six heavy tanks we've got two and our two heavy tanks one is a kv1s i believe and this is some fantastic shooting here it, it, just shots like this you know, he only hits one of them but having the awareness to do this that a bit. and that's a bit you know that could have damaged the 3002's engine um yeah we've got a kv1s and a churchill one as our heavies they've got four tier seven heavies and well they've gone the, the heavy heavy line basically are basically Gonna walk off um, the uh, the opposite flank, uh, but these guys are just work in the field. Uh, the E25, I personally own one of those things. Awesome little vehicle, um, immensely fun, um, absolutely nuts fun. That thing, it's got such a stupid rate of fire. Um, and this thing, well, this is for me. It's a, it's a very very medium medium tank. It's not got fantastic armor, it's got a really high rate of fire, and I believe if it's got the same turret as the Sherman, it would be quite a trollish turret. But hey ho, I'm um, no doubt in the comments I'll get shown that I'm actually chatting bollocks and I don't know what I'm talking about. Basically what these guys are doing, they're being very patient, they're not rushing around, they're not charging off, they're just picking the shots, and just basically just having their way with these guys. You know, they really are just having their way with these guys in this in this um, one, two, three line here, it's absolutely ridiculous. How they've taken these guys apart. We're taking a little bit of damage. Uh, the E25's taking a little bit of damage. You are gonna, you are gonna trade damage in the early stages of a game. This is the thing. Boogie, uh, sorry, Beyond here has taken 285 hit points worth of damage, but he's traded that for 700. Um, and that's one thing you guys need to look at. You know, for the guys that say, "Oh, how do I make myself? You know, how do I get better?" And I was, nah. Ah, we're showing the limitations of the gun here. Shooting this front of a 152. The penetration of the standard AP rounds isn't that great. Get the lower plate though; you can actually do it, and it's not massively accurate. But hey ho, yeah. So how do you improve it? Well, I always look at my damage done for damage received versus damage received, uh, and you always want to make that at least two to one by the end of the game. You know, if you die and you're in a 1500 hit point tank, I want to have at least tried to do at least 3000 damage to the enemy team. If you can do that, then you're a credit to your team. If you take, if you do less damage than what you take, then for me, you're a bit of a handicap. But, you know, if you're in a scout, and this is shooting at the back of an A43, again, AP rounds of just under 500 meters are not going to cut the mustard, even at the back of tanks. 3001P, yes, we can penetrate the front of him. He has really, really weak armor. Once it becomes angled, Whatever. start having problems. Now, six cents went off, and again, we don't manage to penetrate, unfortunately. 
Um, yeah, so back to what I was saying. I like to think that I do at least, if not twice, more. I, I do more damage than what I receive. Basically, that's always what I try and do on every single game. Uh, it's easier in some tanks than others. Now, this is brilliant leading, this is. But unfortunately, you miss it. But the awareness of knowing that that Jagdpanzer IV is going to come through that second gap, that's that's the next level up from me, that is. That's, that's next. That's Unicum level. It's kind of stuff. But anyway, if it made that shot, it would have been amazing. Um, so, yeah, I try and do at least as much damage as my tank, if not more. Um... You don't want to be going down, losing 1,500 hit points for one shell's return. That's just not very good at all. But also, as well, I've noticed this. I mean, I've got another replay in my T54E1 that I'm going to show uh, tomorrow. But basically, don't rush in at the start either. Um, I, I'm so quickly learning. This is unbelievable. When you're 15 versus 15, you're not going to know where anybody is. There's always going to be one numpty on the enemy team. It's not where you think you should be. They're going to get you spotted. And you're going to get annihilated in the first few minutes of the game. I try and be a lot more patient nowadays try my best right we're coming up against a tier 7 heavy all right with a basically a tier 6 gun we're going to have problems now he's angled and his front's facing us this is where the limitations of this gun really do shine through he's shooting at the lower plate of an angled tiger and he's still not at the lower plate but we carry a pcr ammunition now would be a very good time to switch to it doesn't need it though I personally probably is the only criticism. I mean, I'm in no place to criticise this, but I would have probably switched to APCR straight away there. Uh, he took quite a bit of unnecessary damage. He took nearly 500 hit points of damage there, and he could use this in the later game. But then that's another thing. Um, I'm finding as well if I tend to lose a lot of my hit points early on or in the early stages of the game, I do tend to play a lot better <laughs> in the second half. Um, so we're two on two. We are a tank destroyer, tier 7 tank destroyer, and a tier 7 medium tank versus two heavy tanks, one of which, Tiger, is on full health, and the IS-2 is on full health. So what these guys decide to do, I have no shadow of a doubt whatsoever that these two are on comms. They're basically legging it. Um, some would call it a tactical withdrawal, i just call it getting the fuck out of dodge as quickly as they can. What they need to do is they need to use their tanks to their strengths. Now, we're going to see an absolutely amazing... Uh, thing of bush mechanics. Uh, what I mean by bush mechanics is um, how I'll be able to shoot through bushes without being spotted. What you need to do, if the bush, when you look through it in sniper view, you can see through the bush and you can see the enemy tank, you can get spotted as soon as you fire. If, however, the bush is opaque when you look through it, so and all you can see is the red outline of an enemy tank and you fire at it, it won't see you. Um, Quickie Baby did a review, not a review, a video of a chaffy. Uh, not so long back, and the Chaffee driver basically took two tanks apart by using that tactic. And what he's doing here is looking at the E25, and I assume over comms, he's telling him, get in a bush location, I'll spot these guys, and you shoot them to shit rags. Now, the E25 doesn't have a particularly capacious ammunition load. He's already got five kills at E25. Um, so, um, ammo state might be a bit of an issue. Now, we've still got plenty of ammunition. Um, one thing, this being a tier 7 tank, what they tend to do is if they use lower tier guns, they tend to carry a lot more ammunition for them. And here comes the IS-2. Now, Beyond doesn't fire. He wants to let this two IS-2 cap. I don't know what this IS-2 is thinking. Um, basically, they're against two medium tanks. Now, they're not going to win the chasey chasey catch me catch me battle. But capping? I don't know. What would you do in this situation? I don't really think there's a lot else they could do. But basically, Beyond's just lighting this guy up. Can't see him through the bush. You could quite easily have taken a shot there. You know. It, it, he doesn't want to risk it. That's what I mean by bush mechanics. Now, this E25, the rate of fire is just absolutely ridiculous. He's basically taking this guy to pieces. And the IS-2 then pops out of the cap. The IS-2 is not 100% sure now. Beyond realises he's got to be to hasty retreat now. He's got to get out of here. And he gets spotted. Now, these two are going to focus him now. He's firing on the move. And he bounces a Tiger 1. That very lucky bounce there. Um... Tiger could have one-shotted him. Could have one-shotted him, but he's very, very lucky. But in order to have an awesome replay like this, you've got to basically... Um, got to have a little bit of lady look on your side. Just for those that keen-eyed ones amongst you, just look at the platoon's kill stats. Um, there's only one other person, the SU-152, has actually killed somebody in this replay. Um, they've killed everybody else. Can you get a shot? No. So they go back into the cap again. Um, again... They're not exactly, unfortunately you can't see the stats on my replay, but these two aren't exactly fantastic players, um, stat-wise. So basically, 
these guys know that they've got the advantage in tactics on them. There aren't comms anyway, these two aren't, they're not platoon together. Um, so we just should go back to the same place again now. <laughs> I was on the edge of my seat when this was happening. I was thinking, he's going to get spotted, he's going to get killed, he's going to get spotted, he's going to get killed. But somehow he doesn't. And he sits there, and he waits. Now, I was like screaming in my microphone, Shoo the tiger! Shoo the tiger! They wait. They wait and wait and wait. These two, they're going to be looking the wrong way. The tiger's looking the wrong way. He's looking at the last known location of these two. Basically, what they want to do is they want to surprise him and whittle him down as quickly as possible before he turns his gun round. He took five He's fires. We fired now. If that had bounced, that would be GG game over. <laughs> Thankfully, we're shooting APCR with 170 odd millimeters penetration. Flat side of a tiger. What this tiger should have done instantly was turn 45 degrees and angled his whole arm. But unfortunately, he doesn't. You know, it's easy to sit here, you know, behind the computer, not worrying about it, just not of the battle and just sitting here saying oh you should have done this should have done that but in the, in the heat of the battle doesn't happen and the ice too he's a two shot awesome source and i think that is pretty much pg and they even at the end have a little bit of time for a little bit of banter ramming speed <laughs> let's have a look at the post game stats on that bad boy and that ladies and gentlemen is one of the best replays i have ever seen Awesome set of teamwork there. Earned him his mastery badge on the T23E3. Um, I think, I hope this tank's coming into the game. I, I, I assume it's going to be a premium tank. Uh, I really do hope it comes in, because I think it's it's quite a potent little tank. The gun's a bit naff, but the rest of it looks pretty good. But in the hands of a Unicum, they can make pretty much anything look good, within reason. Um, used in the right circumstances. A tier, th a tier 7 medium platoon. Well, the two mediums and a tank destroyer basically just dominated those heavies. It was ridiculous. Um... He got a scout medal and a crucial contribution. Now, crucial contribution is one of the sought-after badges. I've got a couple of these um, from my streaming days. Um, you kill at least 12 enemy vehicles in one battle. Um, to get a Brothers in Arms, you all have to survive. <coughs> and unfortunately, uh, Boogie died uh, mid-game. So unfortunately, they didn't get the Brothers in Arms for three kills each. Mastery Ace Tanker, not a very popular tank. Um, very rare, but then again, the people that are getting these things are usually pretty good. So getting a mastery badge on it's not that bad at all. And he got scout medal as well. He spotted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tanks on that right hand flank there. Um, I don't know why he's got Boogie from his own platoon on there. Did he shoot Boogie? Or did he ram him in the early stages of the game? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, we digress. So team score. Uh, as a result of that, all three of them finished quite high. Um, now, this replay wasn't sent in for the competition, um, so therefore it's not being used for that. Um, but unfortunately, beyond, it wouldn't do very well anyway. I would probably make it an honourable mention, but, you know, hey-ho. But really fantastic replay, buddy. Uh, thanks for sending it in. Now, did he actually do some damage to his own teammate there? No. Just an awesome replay all around. Uh, really, really good teamwork. Um, that's video number two on the Thursday of my birthday week off. Huzzah! Um, take care of yourselves, guys. I will be back uh, tomorrow with a T54E1 replay. Take care of yourselves. Bye now.